How can you pretend not to see what you can see? I overuse that Orwell line about the evidence of your own eyes and ears, but that's because it's so brilliant. You know, it's such a powerful line. It, it is literally the instruction. So today, American people are being asked to ignore the evidence of their own eyes and ears. Ignore the fact that your president hid in a bunker and then ordered the tear gassing of peaceful protesters and then stood outside a church waving a Bible um, while the people in the church, the priests in the church, uh, are united in their condemnation of him. Ignore all of that and what? That's That's the fascinating thing about fascism, isn't it? That line from the Trump supporter a couple of weeks ago when the lockdown protests were going on. So, again, it's, it's clear that in Donald Trump's America, armed white people protesting about their inability to get a haircut are described as, as very good people, while unarmed uh, people of any colour who were protesting against the uh, appalling, appalling uh, death of, of George Floyd, they deserve to get tear gassed. Again, just, just how, do, how do you kid yourself that that's not what's happening? White people with guns storming a state legislature because they're frustrated by the lockdown and some of them were carrying banners saying that they needed a haircut. Donald Trump praises them. Very good people. The governor should talk to them. <laughs> people of all colour, every colour under the rainbow, protesting peacefully outside the White House over the death of George Floyd, a black man who, who died with a white policeman's knee on his neck for nearly nine minutes as the life seeped out of him. They get tear gassed. So I, I understand some of the mental contortions that people have to undertake. I had a crash course in it when Islamophobia was introduced into, into the British media on a, on a scale that I still find staggering, even though it's now so commonplace. I know how it works, but there comes a point where surely it snaps. And it doesn't, to me, seem to be snapping. I'm fascinated by that. So here's some evidence that you will, as a, as a Donald Trump admirer or supporter, uh, I don't know whether you put your fingers in your ears or whether you just call it fake news or whether you pretend that it's actors, but here is fairly conclusive proof that Donald Trump has never read the Bible. You mentioned the Bible. You've been talking about how it's your favorite book, and you said, I think, last night in Iowa. Some people are surprised that you say that. I'm wondering what one or two of your most favorite Bible uh, verses are well, and why. I, I wouldn't want to get into it because, to me, that's very personal. You know, when I talk about the Bible, it's very personal, so I don't want to get into there's verses. No, there's I don't no want to get into... A, there's no, no verse I, that means I, a I lot just, to you that you think about or cite? The, the Bible means a lot to me, but I don't want to get into specifics. Even to cite a verse that no, you like? No, I don't want to do that. I an mean, Old okay. Testament guy or a New Testament guy? Uh, probably equal. I think it's just an incredible, the whole Bible is an incredible, I joke uh, very much so. They always hold up the art of the deal. I say my second favorite book of all time. But uh, I just think the Bible is just something very special. I'm going to play that again because for people who, who, who haven't had, you know, religious education lessons at school like I did, the, the New Testament is essentially a corrective to the Old Testament. So the Old Testament is full of eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. It's an abomination to, to wear cotton and leather at the same time. A man shouldn't lie with a man. Um, and then the New Testament is actually the antidote to a lot of the fundamentalism in the Old Testament. So Christ's messaging, messaging, can't talk about messaging in the context of Jesus. Christ's message was turn the other cheek. That's a correction. That's an antidote to eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. All right? it, it was love thy neighbour as thyself, which is an antidote to um, uh, the notion of God favouring one people over another. It, it, it is clear that you are not committing an abomination if you wear cotton and, and leather. Uh, you can go through Leviticus in particular and find pretty much uh, a justification for every every bigotry and prejudice on the planet. If you want to, um, you 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 know how easy it is when someone starts citing the Old Testament in defence of their homophobia to point out that they should also be swearing off shellfish for all eternity. So so the Old Testament and the New Testament sit in contrast to each other, the deliberate and conscious contrast. Something that even even a child who has had two. RE lessons could understand and articulate, right? Uh, and again, trying to second guess the contortions now. You're listening to that and you go, well, he says he doesn't want to talk about the Bible. It's personal. He was waving one around outside a church last night after ordering peaceful protesters to be tear gassed. Now, Jesus says quite a lot about peaceful people. Indeed, he suggests that the meek shall inherit the earth. So either the Bible is deeply personal to you and you will never mention it, or you'll get photographed waving one around. Have... <laughs> okay, did you see what I mean about 
you explain it to a point where you're literally just describing a round earth and you are wondering, as I do, how people can still be insisting that the earth is flat. So listen to this again. This is Donald Trump, the, the Christian champion. You mentioned the Bible. You've been talking about how it's your favorite book. And you said, I think last night in Iowa, some people are surprised that you say that. I'm wondering what one or two of your most favored Bible uh, verses are well, and why. I, I wouldn't want to get into it because to me that's very personal. You know, when I talk about the Bible, it's very personal. So I don't want to get into there's verses. No, I don't no want to get into it. There's no, no I, verse I, that means I a just, lot to you that you think about or cite. The, the Bible means a lot to me, but I don't want to get into specifics. Even to cite a verse that no, you like? No, I don't want to do that. I an mean, Old okay. Testament guy or a New Testament guy? Uh, probably equal. I think it's just an incredible... The whole Bible is an incredible. I joke uh, very much so. They always hold up the art of the deal. I say my second favorite book of all time. But uh, I just think the Bible is just something very special. I should probably add here that the man who wrote The Art of the Deal, the ghostwriter, um, is one of Donald Trump's fiercest and most evidence-based critics. But hey-ho, facts. Hey, you can prove anything with facts. 